We're here with another Teachers of the Year profile. We're speaking with Jeffrey Roberson, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And Thanks congratulations on being a Teacher of the Year. Thank you. Well, first, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us where you teach, at what school, and tell us what you teach. I teach fourth grade at Woodridge Elementary out in North Highlands, and it's a fabulous program, great, a great group of people and teachers there, and I'm just really honored and pl pleased to be a part of that program. Mm. So fourth grade is kind of a transitional year for kids where they're you know, gaining more skills, you know, really kind of prepping almost for middle school. Yeah. So what's it like dealing with that population where they, they're not quite uh, the babies of you know, first grade, but they're not quite the junior high kids? It's, uh, it's been really rewarding this year. It's my, this will be my second year teaching fourth grade. In previous years, I taught a fifth and sixth loop because I thought that was my favorite grade level, and I found out that they're closer to the teenagers than they are the elementary mm -hmm. school kids that you love and that love to please and wanna, want to please and be a part of the classroom. So teaching the fourth grade has been a, refresh, a refreshing change because they, they still want to please. They're still young enough to, to actually look up to their teacher and want to, and want to gain their teacher's respect as more so than the fifth and sixth graders who can be more teenagerish in their mannerisms and behaviors. So they're not quite at that mature age yet. Yeah, they still, they still, they're still little, well basically they're still third graders, which is my, was my favorite age group. So tell us about the school where you teach and the student population that you're dealing with and, and, and how you work with them on a daily basis. Oh, we have a very diverse student population. We are a Title I school, so a lot of our, 99% of our students qualify for free or reduced lunch. And there is a lot of uh, if, uh, poverty and crime in the neighborhood and in the, in the surrounding community, a lot of single parent homes. And it's just, it's just they face so many more challenges than I did as a, as a, as I came from a single parent home, but I couldn't imagine facing some of the things and the, the challenges and, and the pitfalls that they, that they face on a daily basis at, at their age. So I, I'm just quite glad to be in this, in, in a place where I can help them to navigate some of those, some of those pressures and the issues that they're facing because of some of those things that I faced as, as a child are, were, um, it was seemingly, you know, it just, it just made you not really feel comfortable about being at school or going to school or, or um, wanting to get, want, getting the help that you needed in school. It just didn't seem like it was really like worth it. You know, you don't see that light at the end of the tunnel. So I'm helping them. I'm glad I'm here to help them to, to be a role model and show them that you, you can do it. I did it. If, you, if, if I can do it, you can do it. So what's it like, you know, when you have that extra, extra baggage for those students where, you know, not, not only do you have to work with the curriculum, but you have to deal with them knowing maybe what happened in their neighborhood the night before, or the fact that they might have some turmoil in the home, those types of things. It all kind of impacts the student learning process. It does, and that's one thing that I like to bring that into the classroom as part of our community meetings we hold every week. So we talk about issues that affect not only our learning in the classroom, but things that stressors outside, the, outside of the classroom that we don't see how it affects our ability to learn and be engaged in the lessons in the classroom. So we talk about those things and we, and we discuss different ways of dealing with it and, and uh, different avenues to, to get help in dealing with some of the pressures that they face. And how, how does that, how do the students respond to having those weekly meetings? Well, they look forward to it. because they, they, A lot of times um, it's student run. After, after so many weeks of running the meetings myself, I'll, um, I'll, I'll assign a student to, uh, to um, to run the meetings and we have a, uh, an agenda that we follow and it's a, it's a very set schedule and so once they run through the, the meetings for a couple of, couple of months after about that then they're able to be able to follow the routine and, and it goes really well. They, they look forward to it. It's empowering for them to be able to have a, a, uh, some sort of say in uh, things that we discuss not only in our, in our learning but things that affect our learning. So you're working uh, in kind of a tough community, and so you might have some students who might be, have uh, a little trouble getting motivated mm, yeah. because of either internal or external factors. What are some of the special things that you do as a teacher to, to really get your students motivated and excited? Well, when I was a student, I was the class clown. So I bring that to my teaching, and I, I'm able to um, infuse the um, what we do in the classroom with a lot of music and, and fun activities. So, in, in, for instance, instead of um, reviewing our homework, which we do every day, 
instead of sitting down and just reviewing the, the homework, we play a game show. We have a game show hosted by Rister Moberson, Mr. Ropes and myself. It's called, Oh, I Get It. And so we review the homework and we, and we look for those aha moments. And it just makes it fun. I, I just have a, a, a script, a basic script that I follow. And I, excuse me, and make it, and we just have a good time with playing with um, what we learned and, and what we're going to learn. That's interesting. So they, they probably look forward to uh, the game show. Oh yeah, they yes we do. We have <laughs> we have sometimes too much fun. It's kind of hard to reel them in sometimes, but it I find that it helps because they never know what's going to come out of my mouth or what's going to happen next. So they're always they're, it's it's easy for them to be engaged in what's going to happen or what's going to come next if they know Mr. Robinson's going to make it fun or do something silly. It's kind of a I bring some of the class clowns that I, that I recognize. So I've been you. I know what you're doing. Let me help you to do it a little better, a little differently. And I bring them into the classroom, and they'll help me with the lesson. And it becomes like a, a, um, a Martin and Lewis kind of thing, interacting, going on in the classroom. But at the same time, we're, we're learning about ourselves and, and how we can uh, better address the needs of some of the students who need help and, are, and the students who don't need help seem to have a good time with it as well. Yeah, fun. So what about the, uh, the parents? You, you, you're talking about a lot of single parent households and maybe even there, no parents, maybe they're a grandparent or a custodian. What do you do to, to kind of get those folks involved in, in your process, bringing them into your classroom? When I first started teaching, I noticed the need for um, some home, basic home training, some of the things that I grew up with as a child of a parent from the South. My, my mother was my preschool teacher. So uh, as a kid, I would spend a lot of time in her classroom. And, and when I was growing up, it was yes ma'am, no ma'am, thank you sir, yes sir, no sir. Those types of things, just, just basic manners that show people that you're someone who deserves their respect and that's something that I've infused into the classroom. And I created a, a, uh, an organization called the Gentleman's Club where we do community service. We'll go to lower grade classrooms and we'll tutor and we'll do story times and we'll volunteer our services at different community events. You know, just if. I think it was one of the Teachers of the Year programs that we, um, we went to and we ushered. And they got tons of praise. And, they, and it was amazing to see that they, that how much respect that they gained just for going and doing something very as simple as showing their, uh, a, a show of strength and, and solidarity for our school. And just something as simple as escorting someone from one place to another. And to see how, how much they're appreciated. And, and, and in the community, and, and it gives them some kind of some more credibility other than the street cred that they may look for in the gangs and the, and, the, and all the drama that goes on in the streets. And it's a positive self-esteem too. Exactly. And it definitely has some some meat to it. Oh, oh yeah, and it goes a long way in, in um, learning about them, themselves and how the actions that they, the way they portray themselves, is is um, has a definite a direct effect on how people perceive them. Because a lot of times coming from those environments, there's an instant perception of what they are, of who they are based on where they're from and, and what they dress like. And I show them ways to, uh, ways of behaving and showing them, showing them uh, the public that they're someone who deserves respect regardless of what the public perception might be of them. So how long have you been a teacher? I've only been teaching seven years. Okay, so what got you into the profession? Uh, it's always something that I wanted to do. Like I said, I grew up in a, in a classroom environment with my mom, so, and uh, being the oldest of eight kids, I had a host of cousins that I babysat for. So I always had this interaction with younger kids and it was something that I really missed out on when I left and went to college. So when I got to college, I started volunteering and um, at um, youth, different youth organizations and uh, mentoring students one-on-one -on, -one on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And that continued after college. But uh, it was just, I, I was in the automotive industry. It was not something that I thought, you know, I would go back to the teaching thing. But, it wasn't until several years after I got my degree that I finally decided to go and take a chance and get back into the classroom. It was something that I wanted to affect more than just one kid at a time that I, that I was doing currently in the mentoring, mentorships that I've been involved in. Obviously, you're glad you did. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad. Yeah, and Twin Rivers is glad you did as well. Oh, I'm, I'm pleased to be at Twin Rivers. I'm glad they're, they're, glad they're happy. me. Well, I know they are. I know they are. Well, we've been speaking with Jeffrey Roberson, who is one of two Teachers of the Year from the Twin Rivers Unified School District. Congratulations to you. Thank you.